The Elven Rings of Power are one of the most fascinating and secret artifacts in Middle-earth, and the greatest creations of the Elven Smith known as Celebrimbor. In today's episode, we'll be exploring the history behind their creation, their properties and uses, and why these rings were so precious and important to the Elven people. So in the year 1100 of the Second Age, Sauron travelled to the Elven city of Eregion, and he took on a fair form, and he pretended to be an emissary of the Valar named Anatar. He promised to teach these Noldor elves, and share with them his wisdom and knowledge of crafts, and this offer was too tempting for the elves to refuse, for they felt that they could learn much from Sauron's knowledge, and reach new levels of mastery in their craft. Now these elven smiths were led by Celebrimbor, who was the grandson of Feanor, the greatest smith that ever lived, and for many long years they laboured tirelessly, till their craftsmanship started to reach its peak almost 300 years later. It was then that they would start their most ambitious project that would shape the future of Middle-earth, the forging of the Rings of Power. The first rings that were crafted, such as the Seven Dwarven Rings and the Nine Rings of Men, were made with Sauron's help, while the Three Elven Rings were made by Celebrimbor alone, and they had a very different purpose and power. They were crafted in the year 1590 of the Second Age, and these rings were Celebrimbor's greatest and most valuable creations. They were incredibly beautiful and powerful, and they lacked any form of Sauron's corruption, for they were never touched by him, and he didn't help craft them. Though since his knowledge and instructions played a part in their creation, these elven rings would still fall under control of the One Ring. Now Sauron had a sinister purpose when he helped the elves create the Rings of Power, for he wanted to use these rings to set a bond upon the elves and bring them under his watchfulness. And so he crafted the One Ring in secret, and he gave it the power to control and see the thoughts of the other ring bearers, which would ultimately allow Sauron to enslave them. However, Sauron would underestimate the wisdom and perception of the elven people, and the moment he put on the One Ring and uttered the terrible words inscribed upon it, the elves became aware of his plot and treachery, and they were filled with fear and they immediately removed their rings. Seeing how desperate their situation was, Celebrimbor decided to travel to Lothlorien to seek out the wisdom and counsel of Galadriel, and she advised him that the three elven rings must never be used, and that they should be hidden and dispersed across the lands of Eriador. Now Celebrimbor saw the wisdom in her words, and before he left Lothlorien, he gave Galadriel one of the three elven rings called Nenya. The other two rings, called Vilya and Narya, were given to Gilgalad, the High King of the Noldor for safekeeping and in his wisdom, Gilgalad chose to give Narya to Curden the shipwright. And so, the three elven rings were now in the possession of the three greatest living elves, with two of them located in the land of Linden, while Galadris was found in Othlorien. Now when Sauron learnt that the elves had outwitted him, he was infuriated, and he demanded that the elves of Eregion must hand over all their rings of power, including the three elven rings, for they could not have been made without his lore and counsel. Despite their dire situation, the elves refused to give in to Sauron's demands, and so Sauron gathered the great army and unleashed it upon Eregion, devastating its lands and leaving it in ruins. Its people were massacred and its treasure halls plundered, and Sauron's forces captured Celebrimbor alive. While he was their prisoner, he was tortured relentlessly until he gave up the location of the Seven Dwarven Rings. Though no matter what they did to him or what tortures he had to endure, Celebrimbor refused to give up any information on the whereabouts of the three elven rings. Since Celebrimbor had fulfilled his purpose and would not give up any more information, Sauron had him killed. Though this was not the end of his pursuit of the elven rings, and Sauron guessed that they must have been hidden with elven guardians, which would most likely be Galadriel and Gilgalad. And so Sauron decided to attack the land of Linden, which was the home of Gilgalad, for by doing so, he would have the best chance of seizing one or more of the Elven Rings. Though his plan would fail, and his forces were repelled, and Sauron was left with no choice but to retreat back to the lands of Mordor and slowly recover his strength. Now in the year 1701 of the Second Age, a White Council was held, and during this meeting, Gilgalad appointed Elrond as his vice-regent in Eriador and he gave him his elven ring called Vilya. The three elven rings would remain hidden until Sauron's defeat in the Battle of the Last Alliance, for after Sauron lost the One Ring, the elven rings were temporarily released from its hold, 
and their powers could finally be put to use in the Third Age. Now, as we mentioned previously, the Elven Rings were created with a different purpose to the other Rings of Power, and they lacked offensive capabilities. They weren't made to acquire wealth, lands, or to dominate others, for their power lay in creation, preservation, and the healing of the wounds of the world. They could slow down the decay of time, and after Sauron's defeat, these rings were ever at work. Their lands became majestic, and they preserved the beauty of old, for the guardians of the elven rings preferred to live in memories of the past rather than create anything new and their realms were an imitation of the beauty and tranquility of the Undying Lands. It might be hard to fully appreciate how much this meant to the Elves, and how sorrowful it was for them to experience the decay of time. Though if you'd like to learn more about this, I covered it in great detail in the video which I'll be linking above. However, to simplify it, the world moved both swiftly and slowly for the Elven people, for they aged slowly and changed very little while the world around them seemed to pass by at an incredibly fast rate, and nothing ever seemed to last very long. Now during this time, the guardians of the Elven Rings would still remain a secret, and it was forbidden to speak about them. In fact, very few people knew who held these rings, or where they were kept. Though towards the end of the Third Age, the Elves started to perceive that the lands of Lothlorien and Rivendell seemed to be paused in time and unaffected by change. And so they guessed that two of the Elven Rings were probably held by Elrond and Galadriel. For over a thousand years, the Rings would remain with their respective guardians, enriching their lands, though this would change in the year 1000 of the Third Age, when the five wizards arrived to the shores of Middle-earth. For Curden the shipwright had the greatest gift of foresight of the Elves of Middle-earth, and he foresaw that many difficult tasks and labours lay ahead of Gandalf and that Gandalf was the greatest of the five wizards, and so he gave to him Narya, the Ring of Fire. Only Curden, Elrond, Galadriel and Saruman knew that Gandalf held this ring, and it was one of the reasons why Saruman was secretly hostile towards Gandalf, since he was jealous of this gift and it injured his pride. Now these rings were constantly at work during the Third Age, and I'd like to discuss some of their individual properties to give you a better understanding of their powers and uses during this time. So Narya was the Ring of Fire, and it was adorned with a ruby gemstone. According to Curden, this ring would help Gandalf to rekindle and inspire the hearts of those around him, which he did quite often throughout the Third Age. It also enhanced his warm and eager spirit, as he travelled across the vast lands of Middle-earth, befriending its people and encouraging them to resist Sauron. And when his mission seemed too great or wearisome, the ring would bring some comfort to Gandalf and aid him. I think it's an interesting coincidence that Gandalf seems to have a certain affinity with fire, loving its beauty, as can be seen in his fireworks, and I wonder if Narya, the Ring of Fire, might have played a part in this. Now Nenya was known as the Ring of Water, or the Ring of Adamant, and it was made out of mithril, and it bore a single white gemstone that flickered like a star. Through its power, Galadriel was able to strengthen the realm of Lothlorien, and she made it more beautiful, though this ring also had a great and unforeseen effect upon Galadriel, for it increased her desire for the sea and to return to the Undying Lands, and this diminished her joy while she remained in Middle-earth. Once again, I wonder if this effect could be linked to the element of her ring, since Nenya was the Ring of Water, and it seems to be the only one of the three elven rings that had this effect. Nenya was also described as being the chief of the three elven rings, though it seems that this doesn't mean it was the most powerful one, for in the return of the king, Vilya was described as being the mightiest of the three. Now Vilya was the Ring of Air, and it was made out of gold and adorned with a great sapphire stone. Not much is known about this ring, apart from its power of preservation and healing, and perhaps it enhanced Elrond's healing abilities since he was known to be a great healer. I also wonder if the power it gave Elrond over the land of Rivendell might have helped him summon the flood from the river of Imladris which swept the Nazgul away, since these waters were under his control and he could make them rise up in anger, though I'd like to be clear that this is simply my own speculation. Now if Sauron had to recover the One Ring, everything that had been created with the three elven rings would be revealed to him, and if the One Ring was destroyed, many believed that the power of the three elven rings would end, and the lands that were enriched by them would slowly fade away and dwindle, 
And so we must really appreciate how much the elves were ready to sacrifice and lose for evil to be defeated, and what a bittersweet victory it must have been. Their fears would actually come to pass, and when the One Ring was finally destroyed, all three of the Elven Rings lost their power, and both Elrond and Galadriel grew weary, and they chose to forsake Middle-earth. And so, in September of the year 2021, Elrond, Galadriel and Gandalf set sail from the Grey Havens to the Undying Lands, each still bearing their Elven Rings of power, and this event would mark the end of the Third Age. Now I'd like to give you a bit more information on the three Elven Rings before ending this video. So these rings gave power according to the measure of who possessed them, just like all the rings of power. And so, a more powerful individual would be able to make better use of it. However, unlike the other rings of power, the Elven Rings did not make their user invisible, which would suggest that this property was associated with Sauron, since the rings that he had a direct part in creating all had this ability. It also seems that the elves were capable of hiding their rings from unwanted eyes, unless they held the One Ring, for Sam was unable to see Galadriel's ring in Lothlorien, while Frodo could since he possessed the One Ring. Their power to slow down the passage of time could also be felt by mortals, for after the Fellowship left Lothlorien, we see that they lost track of time, and what seemed to be the passing of a few days was actually an entire month. I would also like to emphasize that we really shouldn't underestimate the beauty and power of these rings just because they lacked offensive capabilities, as they were so powerful that Sauron had no choice but to put so much of his strength and will in the One Ring, since it had to surpass them in power to be able to control them. Also, I think it's very clear that even though they didn't have offensive uses, they could still be used defensively. After all, the Witch King was scared to enter Lothlorien, or defy the power of Galadriel's ring, which would suggest that they could be used defensively to protect against enemy attacks. And this actually is where my speculation on Elrond's control of the river comes from. Anyway friends, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested, check out our Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Discord and some of our affiliate links in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.